The news out of Castleton University from Associate Dean for Athletics and Recreation, Deanna Tyson. She's announced that she's not only hired a wrestling coach, but she's hired one of the best. Scott Legacy is joining us now. He is, of course, a Hall of Fame coach at Mount Anthony Union High School out of Bennington, Vermont. He joins us now. Scott, how are you? Good. How are you, Scott? 30 years, my friend. 30 years. You have amassed a record that is, well, it's a Hall of Fame record. Uh, and you take that big step going from a high school level to a collegiate level to start a program off at Castleton, Vermont. Talk to us about that decision. It's not easy for sure. No, it wasn't. Uh, actually, I'm, this is my 31st and final year of coaching. So um, when I, I'm an alumni of Monty Anthony High School, and I went away to college and came back. And when I came back, I uh, took over a program with six wrestlers in it and got it to grow. And then in the fourth year of coaching, we won our first state title, which – We've won 27 straight since that time, and, you know, we're going for 28. So there's been a lot of blood, a lot of sweat, and a lot of tears um, during that time, and a lot of different um, coaches, um, administrators, community people, and outstanding athletes that um, have wrestled for me. So it's um, a kind of a bittersweet decision, uh, but it's... For me, it's time for a change. Uh, I never wanted to um, leave the program when the cupboard was bare, and it's pretty strong right now. And with, we're a pretty young team this year. We're, we're starting five to six freshmen, and we've, we're already seven and zero. Oh, and we've won three tournaments, and we got a strong junior high program. So I think that it's really important to step aside and maybe move on while um, I feel really secure about the direction of our team. So you understand, of course, how to develop a program, and it's not just about what you're coaching immediately. It's about uh, bringing up those before that. So in other words, strong uh, uh, junior high or middle school program leads to a strong high school program and eventually can, in this case, lead to a a strong pipeline into the collegiate programs. Yes, uh, you know, I've had some opportunities over the years uh, from some different colleges and some of them local and and a lot of different high schools throughout the country that were looking for an elite high school coach to maybe move in. Um, I've always been tied to the community in Bennington. Uh, I still plan on residing here um, for the next three or four years, believe it or not. I'm going to teach at Mount Anthony and then commute to Castleton when my teaching duties are done for the day. Um, but um, as far as starting out a new program, uh, I'm not phased by it at all. I think it's going to revitalize myself, give me a new sense of energy. Uh, I've met a lot of great people in wrestling, just like yourself over the years. I have a lot of connections. I want to tie into those. And um, I, the biggest thing is I feel like I'm going to be an ambassador for Vermont wrestling. We only have one college, which is Norwich University. It's kind of a different structure with it being a military school. And uh, uh, this is an inexpensive opportunity for some of the better Vermont wrestlers to maybe now stay at home, give their families a chance to watch them. And we're not far from the Albany, New York area, which is Section 2. Um, where the famous journeyman wrestling club is out of. And the unique thing about that is there, there's about 80 schools in Albany, New York, the Section 2 area, the Capital District area, but there is not one college wrestling team, and we're about an hour and 40 minutes away. So I, I'm really hoping to tap into that area. We're seeing wrestling continue to grow around the country. A lot of it, of course, D2, D3, JUCO, et cetera, Coach, and and what we're seeing is Castleton leading the way in an area, as you said, uh, that is surrounding uh, Castleton and, and D2, or at least your your uh, division that you're talking about within. We're going to be Division Three. Division we'll, Three. Yeah. But we'll, think then, think about that. What are the opportunities for those kids? Uh, your son, for example, Scott, as well. Um, if if he didn't have that opportunity, having you as an example as being a great coach, uh, an academic leader, uh, somebody that cares about the longevity. It's not just wrestling at the end of the day. It's not just wrestling. It's wrestling and. And 
you know, wrestling has provided a, a launching pad for so many great kids, and you're seeing it right there in the New England area. We're seeing wrestling growing. Yeah, it's uh, it's really going rapidly, and I, I'm not sure, and you might be able to help me with the number of colleges that have added on the Division three level. Um, just recently, I was talking to Mike Moyer on the phone, and, and it's very high. I can't, I don't want to misquote what it was, but it, it was a, I want to say it was up in like the twenties over the past three or four years. Yeah, between, sure. between division two and division three, we're over a hundred programs over the last three years. And okay. that, that's well, an way, amazing number. Yeah, I'm way off. But to speak about Castleton university itself, it's a great opportunity for me. And I need to thank president walk and um, Scott Dykeman, the Dean of administration and Deanna Tyson, the athletic director, the, the school or the university itself, is rapidly added sports and wrestling now becomes a 28th sport for a small division three school with just about 2000 to 2200 kids on a beautiful campus so it's the real college experience for these kids and um you know when i went up there i noticed that the family atmosphere that it brought was um unique uh and that the facilities were outstanding and um, if Castleton is buying into it, they are 110% into it, which they really are, and they're really excited about the uh, wrestling team. And um, I think that we had a major win for wrestling. Uh, I was told by Scott Dykeman, the dean of administration, that um, that with they made an announcement about myself being the coach uh, somewhere around 11:30 a.m. last Thursday. And by about 9.30 a.m., not even 24 hours later, uh, I was told that this story had the most number of hits on uh, um, CastletonSports.com in the history of that website. And I I know that to be a fact. Scotty Dykeman's got a home run here. Uh, The number of kids that want to go to school and in some way, shape, or form compete on the collegiate level uh, can be 20, 30, 40, 50 kids on a college campus. That represents ten to $20,000 per student athlete. So fiscally speaking, Castleton's got a home run. Uh, what they've done is they've hired one of the best coaches in the country to lead this program, to take his next step, and to take athletics at Castleton to the next step as well. And Dykeman knows this, uh, Deanna Tyson uh they understand it's about creating that opportunity for student athletes, don't they? Uh, they really do. They, uh, you know, um, they also, they're very proud of the fact that uh, the student athletes uh, average GPA is higher than the general student population. And um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm accurate in saying that the student athlete GPA there is, is around 3.0, which is, is outstanding. And um, they're also part of the fact that they don't lose very many student athletes at all once they're there, no matter what the sport is. So, um, you know, there's always a little bit of a percentage dropout for any college, obviously, when students attend. But they, um, you know, in conversations with them, they lose a minimal amount of athletes, if any at all, really. They're very proud of that. And I think it speaks to the type of environment that they have created there. And I was just really impressed by it all. And, um, you know, um, when I first met President Walk, because he's the guy that kind of started it all out, and then, of course, he knows who he's hiring underneath him, just the energy and the positive, you know, feedback from him and the direction they were going, it just it made it hard to say no. Made it hard to say no, indeed. We're talking with the new head coach, Scott Legacy of Castleton uh, University. And, of course, that's the new program in Castleton, Vermont. Deanna Tyson there, the uh, University Associate Dean for Athletics and Recreation. Here's what we're talking about. An opportunity for kids to continue to compete. An opportunity for kids to get a great education under a great coach. And what we're talking about, I think, if you look back at your career what you've done is immerse yourself in, in wrestling at all levels. You've got a national record for all high school coaches plus all Americans, but you also have an ability to coach at the cadet and junior national team level. 
And what we're talking about is an ability for kids to reach into their bag and say, hey, maybe I want to I try for a world championship. Maybe I want to try for an Olympic medal. Uh, that's a pretty special opportunity, Scott. Um, you, well, you know, one thing I've always... I'm passionate about wrestling, so that's why I'm I'm kind of versatile and and I was you know a huge part of USA Wrestling and bringing kids out to well the Junior Nationals, which are now in Fargo, but I can remember when I was going to them in Cedar Falls, Iowa, and to um, the University of, or I think it was Columbia, Missouri, when they were split up, they'd have the cadets in one area and the juniors in another. And my whole summer was spent doing freestyle and Greco wrestling. Um, so, uh, I think the opportunities are there. Uh, you know, I did have one athlete under me that made it to, um, the U S open Greco finals a couple times by a young man by the name of Steve Forrest when he was wrestling for the, uh, Marines and I'm um, hoping to bring Steve along with me to Castleton, to be honest with you. Um, and then a few other people, but, um, uh, you know, on the Vermont level, it's going to give kids a chance to go to school there and stay in state at an inexpensive price. The out-of-state students, it still can be quite inexpensive. Um, and they're, obviously, if you're a decent student, the university works with those kids with academic aid and stuff like that. So it's a win-win situation for a young man because uh, going to college is, is not cheap these days, as you know. And I think that um, Castleton can offer a very strong um, academic uh, learning environment while working for your diploma. And we're hoping to offer a great athletic experience on the Division Three level, you know, and, and provide opportunities for these young men. And then still, like, um, like you just said, uh, maybe we can have a few young guys that, that want to go on and, and expand their horizons uh, on that international level. 13 years you've been a board member of the National High School Coaches Association since 2002, to be exact, and also the Vermont State Chair for USA Wrestling for nearly 30 years. Right. I'm giving that position up, by the way. Are you? <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm exhausted just <laughs> looking at your resume. No president of Catamount Wrestling Club. I mean, um, first of all, you don't look your age. I know how old you really are, and at 42 years old. Yeah, right. Uh, you... <laughs> And you and I know the joke, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I want to go back to your years as a wrestler. And I want to go back to when you fell in love with this sport. Um, how, old, how old were you and who, who, who took you to the sport to begin with? Kind of a wild story. So um, my brother was wrestling. Uh, he's two years younger than I am. And so he might have been about third or fourth grade. And I was playing youth basketball. And I was in sixth grade. And I um, used to get out of basketball practice. And my mom or dad, whoever, would pick me up and bring me over to his wrestling practice. I'd be sitting along the mat waiting for him. And then finally they talked me into, you know, jumping on the mat. And uh, I liked it, you know, I guess. It, you know, it's like anything, that individual thing, and it attracted me. I was not very good at the beginning. Um, so, uh, again, like my brother, we'd go to youth tournaments, and he'd be, like, winning them all. And I'd be, like, 0-2, crying in the bleachers, waiting all day long. Back then, there used to be events from, like, 7 in the mornings. It seemed like 9 at night. Exactly. And I, you know, now they've gotten better. We've all gotten better with that kind of stuff and realize you if you want to keep kids off the sport, you can't be in the gym all day long. But um, so, you know, it clicked for me somewhere around eighth grade. And from there, I, you know, took off on the high school level and things like that. Being from Bennington or Mount Anthony at the time, um, you know, not a lot of us were being recruited out of college. So I, you know, I had a successful high school career. And then I ended up going to a, one of the top junior colleges in the country, which was Morrisville at the time. And I was actually part of a team that broke the nation's longest college winning streak, which was Delhi University years ago. And um, then I transferred to Oswego State and wrestled for, at that point, legendary coach Jim Howard. Wow. And, um, you know, finished up there. 
and I you was were actually not, you were actually team captain at Oswego. So I mean, let's not. Well, actually, that's I was team captain at Morrisville. I, you know, that was just a misprint in the the um, announcement. Uh, I was not captain at Oswego, but I was a big member of the team. Um, I'm gonna I, make you I, I right now. I'm gonna make you honorary captain. Are you ready? Pardon me. I said right now. I'm gonna make you honorary captain. Yeah, sure. Um, Mike Howard was my teammate, and he's the current coach at Oswego State. So. Uh, we were joking about that. Like he didn't think it was any big deal, but you know, <laughs> Mike when, Howard is a great guy. Pardon me. I said, Mike Howard is a great guy. I can understand why he might want to just push that aside, but tremendous he, coach he and a great guy. Was, they posted it on their thing. He couldn't wait to run the story. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a good publication for them too. So, but hopefully he doesn't get any recruits out of it. They come my way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Now the battle's on, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So. I want you to talk to me about um, uh, what what the sport has meant to you in terms of family. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is always a big deal for me. I know your son, Scott, and and uh, obviously a very forgiving, understanding, and energetic guy. Understands the internet better than you and I do. Yeah. But the the uh, The sport uh, can mean a lot to a lot of folks, and obviously it means something to you. Can you tell us about family? Yes, I can. So, you know, my mom and dad are very <laughs> into wrestling and uh, my mother's struggling with it. Yeah, they're still, they're elderly. They're, you know, 82 and 81. And, um, you know, uh, you know how those years get a little bit, but uh, they're struggling with the fact a little bit, especially with my mother, that I'm not going to be the Monty Anthony coach. But they always supported me in wrestling. Um, we didn't grow up with a lot financially, but I can tell you that, that they made sure that um, anything my brother and I wanted to do with the sport, we did. So that kind of carried over. I have a very loving wife, Kelly, um, who, and I also have a, a daughter, Amber, who is a, an outstanding athlete. And they gave up a lot of time and gave me up, obviously, a lot as we, as I developed my professionalism and had all these successes. They were very understanding. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's some triumph moments throughout all that, obviously, but um, the entire crew. So my son, Scott, my daughter, Amber, and my wife, Kelly, have stuck by my side through thick and thin. And um, I wouldn't have been able to do any of this or have any of these successes without them. It's you know, I know that kind of sounds cliche, Not at all. you know, a lot of people say that, but it's, it's fact. And if I ignored that, um, you know, uh, uh, shame on me. So, uh, when I was, this was getting ready to go down, all, um, three of them were wanted it to happen. They kind of felt it was time. They felt it was the next natural progression for me. And, um, you know, I never intended when I went into being a high school wrestling coach to end up with all these records that are national records, you know, the 27 straight, the, you know, the number of state champions you've talked about and all those, those type of things. Um, unless you tell me what you did, my career record, I really don't know it off the top of my head. I normally have to look it up on our school's website or internet when media calls me. So it was never about that. It was always about the love and passion for the sport, developing kids into young men and being successful most of the time at turning them out to be decent community people and great human beings and loving parents and stuff like that. You don't win them all, as you know. Um, those the ones I lose probably bother me more than the ones that we won, but um, I could not have done any of this without my family. Isn't that an interesting commonality, though, Scott? About uh, the you know you think about the ones that you lose, um, and I don't care if you're Dan Gale, I don't care really who you are, what your name is, but you remember the ones you lose more than the ones you've won, and it's not about the number. It's about the, the, the interaction, the social experience. And, um, and you're one of those guys, and right now you get to go on and, and attempt to make the difference uh, as you will, uh, no doubt, at Castleton. And that's the biggest opportunity. And you're taking that 
opportunity and running full steam with it. And I love that idea and lead them by example. Um, there are obviously people at university level, at the collegiate level, high school level that you want to thank. Who are those guys? Well, you and know, I should, I should say, who are those people? At the high school level, I could go on and on and on, but without mentioning tons of names, it would be obviously first my athlete and, uh, you know, all the loyal and loyalty and dedication. And I was overwhelmed. I'm not, I don't have Facebook. I'm not a Facebook person. My wife does and my children do. And, you know, the local media, uh, it blew up media wise, at least in this area and this region. Um, and on the websites and stuff, but uh, a lot of my kids uh, went on uh, the local media banner Facebook page and posted great comments, which ended up making the front page of the paper locally and just thanking me and um, everything that went on at Mount Anthony, and they were sad to see it leave, but they were also happy for me. So everybody was wrestled for me. I've had so many assistant coaches over the years that I'd – hate to start rattling names off and then miss one, but I would like to thank any person that's been a part of my staff, whether it be paid or volunteer. And I have a lot more volunteer coaches than I have paid. Um, it's been a standing joke that when we walk into somewhere, I've had as many coaches as I do wrestlers, but that's why our wrestling team has been good because there's that many people willing to give of their time and they all drank the Kool-Aid, so to speak. So um, that's, that's what all my alumni and my coaches say. Like, Coach, you were really good at, at helping us all drink the Kool-Aid. And, and, and um, you know, because of that, it, it tasted good and we followed you and stuff. That's a lot of those things I'm hearing. Administration-wise, at Mount Anthony, I've lived out a lot. I've already seen a lot of administrators come and go. But each and every one of them have been supportive of our program um they it didn't it never took them long to recognize what wrestling was about it wasn't just about getting your hand raised or all the winning that we were doing that it was more about you know what how we were developing the kids and the young men i've been with one athletic director pretty much my entire career um i think this is this is my 31st year of coaching. I think he said this is his 28th or 29th year as athletic director, and uh, his name is Tim Brown, and he's been very good to me, very supportive. Uh, he allowed me to take a, a small town team and travel nationally with it to, you know, like the Virginia Duels or when the um, Ironman officially opened up in Ohio, we were part of that or down to Alabama to my good friend Steve Gadosh at Vestavia Hills High School um, to dual meets in Florida during the wintertime, uh, all over New England, into Pennsylvania, tournaments in Jersey. So, you know, I was very fortunate to be able to do that. And um, then there's the uh, college level, which the people, you know, I haven't met a ton of people up there, but the three main people I met was, you know, the, is who I mentioned. It's President Walk, um, uh, Scott Dykeman, and Deanna Tyson. So uh, I've been pretty blessed to, you know, this point in my career. And, and um, you know, so I, you know, you know how you pay it forward. So you pay it forward. it's time for me to pay it forward at a different level now. Well, it's been an outstanding opportunity to be able to hear your story, to be able to understand what is happening there, and I think the people at the University of Castleton in particular understand what the obligation is, what the opportunities are, and uh, Castleton, obviously the recipient of an exceedingly good coach. What you do with it from this year on uh, will be your decision, but for right now, you're going to build on that. Uh, I know that the record's wrong because you've won seven cents, but you were at 654. I think you're already at six. 61 or 2, 35 and 2. Uh, right. New England championships continue to mount up, and you're going to coach through the end of the season before turning your complete attention to the Castleton Wrestling Program. But we congratulate you and congratulate them. This has been a tremendous interview for me. Well, uh, thank you very much. I'm excited, and I hope you continue to follow us and, and touch base with me. I know that we've talked. I, I can't remember a few times over the years we've talked about different things, uh, 
some of my athletes. I, it was the last time we talked about Jesse Webb, maybe, or um, <laughs> yeah, years ago. So it was at Ohio University. Yeah. And, uh, so um, I want to thank you for being who you are to our sport of wrestling also. And, uh, you know, you're throwing out kudos my way, but you yourself have kept us in the spotlight, too. And, and the fact that you're taking time out of your day to talk to me about our small university that's getting ready to start up means a lot to us at Castleton. Wow. Um, thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's an absolute great opportunity I have to talk to guys like you, and I appreciate that. Uh, to everybody at Catamount Wrestling Club, to everybody at the National High School Coach Association, to those that you've coached and will coach, they're going to be much stronger for that experience. Vermont Wrestling is much stronger for the experience of having you be a part of it and to be a leader in it. And I can't thank you enough, Scott. Thank you, Scott, also. My best to your son. Happy holidays to you and yours. Merry Christmas. Castleton hey. Wrestling has got a great gift on their hands right now, and that is an incredible coach named Scott Legacy. The journey continues, and we appreciate the opportunity I've had to be able to help tell that story. Scott, thank you. Thank you, and Merry Christmas, Scott. Merry Christmas to you. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown. Thanks for watching, and thanks for listening. 